Hey guys, Will Scully with AudioSavings.com. We're hanging out, it's 2014, the NAM conference, and I'm hanging out with John at the Yamaha booth. We're gonna talk about some powered speakers today. We're looking at the DXR family, and uh, this is a pretty powerful bunch of speakers. Am I right, John? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. These are our um, latest uh, versions of um, powered loudspeakers. They have an 1100 watt amplifier system built in. Wow. And they've got a lot of DSP as well to control that power, so you get some really accurate sound out of it. Uh, that, that's important. You know, you get a you get a big speaker that doesn't have a lot of control. You can find yourself in some funny situations in different venues. So let's uh, can we jump right into the DSP on these? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, so yeah, the control part of this is that you want to be able to uh, when you're using the, um, a speaker like this, you want to come in and immediately get great sound out of it. So we've got FIR filtering at the crossover point. Okay. So phase coherency, okay. which is what me and you hear as flat response, right. comes right through on these immediately, Amazing. allowing you some more gain before feedback. So the most important thing to you guys, <laughs> less howling. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that's the first thing. Okay. Uh, and secondly, with DSP comes protection. Mm -hmm. We can offer you the kind of, uh, we hang on to the power mm -hmm. so that even a little 8-inch speaker like this can take the full advantage of that high power without the possibility of damaging the driver. Is there a built-in limiter? Is that what we're talking about? Exactly. Okay. A multi-band limiter. So what's really neat about that wow, that's is nice. it's happening and you don't really hear it right. as much as if it was just a brutal limiter. Yeah, you're not ducking the whole sound. So again, if it's just a frequency on the high end that's that's that would be that would be peaking the system, it's just gonna hit that high frequency and limit that. And what happens, guys, when you got a wave file or a wave file, a wave signal going going out of a speaker, when it limits or hits, when it peaks, it does like this and basically causes an unnatural flow of the speaker, and that's when you start blowing out systems, right? Absolutely. Okay. Clipping, what you're mentioning there is clipping. Right. It, when when you think about a, a speaker, it's mm -hmm. always moving in and out. Exactly. Whenever it's moving in and out, it's making sound. Right. When you're clipping, that's time that the speaker is spending all the way out or all the way in. Right. And only getting hotter. Right. So that's what blows up speakers. Absolutely. A, it's the weirdest thing. Customers think high power blows up speakers. Mm -hmm. It's actually low power or mm -hmm. clipping mm -hmm. that does more damage. And we, we've all blown out our, our, our own share of speakers. <laughs> hey man, you know we're not we're not all perfect. So let's let's look at the back. So it looks like we've got XLR, we've got RCA quarter inch and uh, and then you got your in and out you know your throughputs as well let's just kind of break this down for uh, for our viewers oh absolutely so on, on the back panels of all of these they're all the same for all the models okay um, you get a mic in and two stereo inputs what's kind of cool is this bottom XLR output mm -hmm. used to be that would just mono everything and mm -hmm. you'd link it over and just keep going daisy chain to your other speaker right wouldn't it be cool if you could plug in all your stereo inputs on one speaker and your microphone and then go link out when you hit this button allows you to go stereo only send left channel information over to the other speaker so you stay in full stereo that is absolutely genius i love that uh, that that functionality to this uh, to this system and then and then moving on we've got a front led disabled so you can look here you you know if your uh, limits working that's just going to let you know if you've got a signal coming through uh, your protection uh, tell me about that what's protection the protection will let you know if something has happened to the speaker it'll light up to let you know there's an issue you need to, to, to deal with. There's a light right below the protection that mm -hmm. says limit. That's the one you're gonna watch that'll that let you know the DSP is actually controlling the, the unit. Also, yeah. if you use the front panel lamp, okay. it glows brighter when the unit's in limiting to warn you that you're in limiting. You are near the maximum output of the speaker. Wow, what a, what a smart uh, smart reason. I can think of a hundred reasons why, why that would just be extremely handy and important. So man, you guys are really paving the way with these things. Now let's uh, let's just talk about wattage real quick because we have, just to go through them, we got the uh, DXR8. What else we got? Oh, there's the 8, the DXR10, okay. the DXR12, and then finally the DXR15. Okay. We have a full family of those. And then there's two subwoofers as well. So there's a DXS12 sub okay. and a DXS15 sub. Okay. And they're both real compact so that we could get them into a smaller um, vehicle so you oh. could get in and out easy. Absolutely, those subwoofers can get kind of overbearing sometimes. You know how that goes, and they are compact. This thing's uh, wow. I mean, it's it's not that wide at all. I, I would imagine that the, the woofer sits like this in there. Yeah, actually, the woofer is sitting for the uh, in the conventional way. Okay. This is a fan pass design speaker, so it's actually you could see the woofer behind the uh, grill. But, okay. Uh, 
the nice thing about this is I can put all that in two DXR10s in my my little compact car. Okay. No problem in the back seat. Cool. And then uh, you know maybe maybe something that's a given, but you know just for our viewers as well, when you run to the subs, it's going to automatically filter off the low frequencies when going to your tops. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. What um, what he's mentioning here is the, what we call crossing over. Yeah. You want to divide your frequencies so that you know your woofer's doing the hard work for you on right. that low end, but it lets your your front speakers have that the high part. It, it lets them scream. They, exactly. And all you need to do is the switch that's on the top box, set that at your high pass or let the highs through. And then, of course, your subwoofer has low pass, which is let your lows through. Set the two switches, you're done. That, I mean, that's wonderful. You know, and as expected, you're going to get that Yamaha sound, which everybody's familiar with. I mean, this is a household name here, guys. You're going to get that Yamaha durability. And uh, and then this new Yamaha functionality. I mean, I, I think it's about all you need. And then, and then last recap, the DXR8s are the only ones that don't uh, turn into a wedge. Everything else up past that, uh, you know, you've got that wedge and that nice angle for the front stage. So, guys, thanks again for tuning in. John. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure, sir. And uh, my name is Will Scully. Make sure to find your Yamahas at audiosavings.com.